It's time to milk the cow. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go milk the cow. Oh, boy. Yay. Yay. She's waiting for breakfast. Hi, Heidi. Wanna say hello to the camera? Say hello. Moo. Ooh, I hear Moo. mom say Moo. Mom saying hi. Mom's over there. That's Tootsie. How old is she? She is about three weeks old. And she weighs about 120 pounds. So she's a pretty big little calf. And she's a heifer, which means girl. And that's what they call a girl calf. What time was she born? She was born about two o'clock in the morning. Her mom wanted to keep it a secret. And that's her mom. She's letting us know it's time to be milked. So let's go ahead and get ready. Dr. Hodges will be taking Miriam out to milk. This is this is the aunt of Heidi. How old is she? Miriam is two years old, going on three. She had her first calf last year, and she's just about done being milked. Normally we milk cows for about ten months. And they have their babies where they're pregnant for about ten months. Nine, nine months and 10 days. And so um, she's getting ready to have her next calf. So she'll be finished up here in a couple weeks and then we'll be ready to have another baby. Okay, so the milking process. The milking process. So I put on my little stool and Miriam is eating some grain. She likes to relax and, and enjoy grain and it's got full of corn and vitamins and minerals. And so then um, while she's eating, we start the milking process. So a little review is how we have our system, our milking system. Here's on a big dairy, they'll have a big system that has a big vacuum line and all the milk will go to one place. Where this is a smaller milking machine and the milk just stays right here in the bucket. And this hose is my vacuum hose. So this hose will goes up to a vacuum pump that's up, up above. And my assistant's going to turn it on here, but you can't really hear me talk very well with the vacuum on. So what I'm going to do is I'll stick my thumb inside, and there's no vacuum right now, so it just hardly sticks on my thumb. But I'm going to have my assistant turn it on, and you'll see how much vacuum there is. on my finger, that's just exactly like a calf suck on, on your hand. It's the exact same thing the cow sucking on the, the teats of the cow is um, how that vacuum works. So now I'm going to prep the udder. If you want to come down here, you can take a closer look. What I do is I get a nice cloth and then I take and I wipe the teat off to make sure it's clean. I do twice around the outs outside, and then I check the bottom of the teat to make sure there's no dirt and it's all clean. So I do that for each of the four teats. What do you call those parts of the end of those four parts? Those are the teats. Each of these four parts down here at the very bottom is the teat. And four what's make up the udder? So there's four quarters. So each udder has four individual parts. And that's how they named it, a quarter. Yes? How do they, how do they walk? The question was, how do they walk? Well, with these big udders, they learn to step from side to side, and they make sure, right now they're not walking, because she's being milked and she's standing quite nicely. But they learn, as the udder fills with milk, to move their legs from side to side. Oh. What's that stuff? This stuff is teat dip, so it's iodine, and it's a sanitizer, and it coats the entire teat and makes it so that you get all the bacteria off, 
and you leave it sit on there for a couple seconds and then you wipe it clean and then your finger becomes sanitized. In this case, the teat becomes sanitized. So I wipe off each teat afterwards. And then I... Question. Yes. How do they get white? The question was, is how do they get white? Well, all cows make white milk. And so even though she's a brown cow and her sister, uh, Tootsie, is a brown cow, they all make white milk. If you want brown milk, like chocolate milk, then you have to add chocolate. What are you doing now? I am strip, it's called stripping the tea. It makes the, her ready to let her milk down. And so it's- So what is the stuff originally coming out like that? That, this is milk that she's letting down on her own. That's all the milk. She's re getting ready to release the milk. And so I'm just squeezing it because so she's ready to do it on her own. I feel another question coming. What's your next question? <laughs> well, like, why don't you collect that milk? Well, that's, so the question was, why don't I collect that milk? And the reason I want to make sure I get the first, sometimes cells, or I don't want to say, older milk sets to the bottom of the udder. And so we want to make sure that we strip that part out, we get it out, and so we have the best clean milk ready for people to drink um, that's ready to go on the top of the udder. So now I'm gonna turn on the vacuum and apply the milking machine. And you'll see me put each teacup individually, four teacups for each of the four quarters. And then the milk will go from her into the bucket using the vacuum. So now she's been done milking. Uh, she's finished with these quarters on this side. So half of her udder is done. So I can squeeze this line down here and actually feel if there's milk coming through. And so there's not, and I can tell that she's empty. So I take it off the teeth. And that one's done, and the one behind it, it feels empty too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one off. So these two on the far side, are still going. They have a little bit more milk on that side than this side, and she's always been like that. Now, since this is all vacuum driven, the milking machine needs a vacuum to work. So, just like. How much milk goes into the milking machine? About Miriam, she makes about two gallons of milking, and her sister Tootsie makes about three gallons uh, at a time. And watch out for a cow's tail while you're milking, too. So she's about done. So back to the vacuum. Um, if, you, if you lose the vacuum at any time, it will sound sort of like this. Now the whole system stopped working and won't have any suction power. But then you have to wait till it gets going again and you regain the vacuum. Just sort of like if you use your vacuum cleaner at home, it's very similar that you need to have good suction for it to work. If it's clogged, it won't work. Same concept with the milking machine is if you don't have enough vacuum power or enough suction, it won't hook onto the cow. Just like the head of your vacuum cleaner won't stick on the end of your vacuum. done milking, we always sanitize the teats again. So we want to make sure that we use our teat dip one more time to make sure that it leaves a barrier so that no bacteria can get in the udder during the day. And so each teat is make, has a nice coating and so that will last all about another 12 hours until we milk again. Cows can be milked on average two to three times a day. Um, most commercial dairies 
or bigger dairies use two or three time a day milking and some places even have robots that do it. So they can milk up to six times a day. It just depends on the farm and how many cows they have. So let's take a look inside the milking bucket. And you can see the milk there and it's fresh right from the cow. Non-pasteurized. Non-pasteurized. Later on we'll pasteurize it. <laughs> and Miriam is also saying hi and giving you bath at the same time. <laughs> All right, so here we've now finished milking the cows and we've got our milk in the bucket and now we're gonna get ready to feed the calf. So this is a Swiss bucket and nipple system where the nipple goes on here and she's gonna suck milk from the bucket up this hose and then into the nipple. How much does she drink a day? She drinks about two gallons a day about one gallon per milking. Over here, okay. So, we, since Tootsie makes three gallons of milking, okay. that gives us an extra two gallons per milking. So we'll get four gallons extra that the calf isn't drinking. That's the difference between- Can you drink plain milk, just that milk? The question is, can you drink this milk? Yes, we could drink this milk, but we like to pasteurize it. Pasteurizing is the process of heating it, and that kills bacteria, that maybe we can't see in the milk, um, and it makes it a more wholesome product for the consumer. So, um, a beef cow will only drink about, make about one gallon, whereas a dairy cow can make up to like Tootsie, three gallons per milking. So that makes a lot more milk for the consumer. Or <coughs> what can you make out of milk? The question was, what can you make out of milk? So you can make cheese, you can make ice cream, you can make yogurt, you can make whey for energy drinks or, or fitness drinks and workout drinks. Um, you can take all these products and you start off with the same ingredient and that, that first ingredient is the raw milk. So then they, do, then they pasteurize it and then they separate it out based on what they want to use it for. How long does it take for the milk to get to the store? The question was, how long does it take to get from milk to get to the store? Typically, milk goes from the farm to the store in about three days. It's very quick turnaround. Um, some dairies even directly ship it to a processing plant. So if they're really big, they're going to have a truck that the milk will go right from the cow onto the truck to the processing plant and will be on your shelf the next morning at the store. So it can be very fast. All right, let's go take this milk to Heidi. I bet she's hungry. Where's Heidi? You ready for some milk? You taking a nap? Okay, get ready. Well, there's the little nose. I see a nose. I see the nose. So I take this, set it in here already trying to suck on it and she's going to start Maybe. sucking and the milk goes up and inside. Are there other ways for you to feed a calf other than using that? Yes, so the question was are there other ways to feed a calf and you can use a, a bucket, a bottle and a nipple and they'll want to use that but this is much easier because you don't have to stand there and hold it the whole time. Um, they do make little racks and things, but I find this to be pretty convenient. Yep, How she's... does she drink the milk? How does she drink the milk? So if you want to take a close look... Here. Maybe she... There's it. It's like so a... just like she's sucking on my finger, she uses that same sucking power like the milking machine vacuum. And then she sucks on the nipple. Just like a cow's nipple. And that's what brings the milk up the tube. How come she can't suck on, how come she can't drink off of her mother? The question was, is how come she can't drink off of her mother? What we do is, in the dairy industry, we want to make sure that the cow's teeth stay clean. And so calves, like she's sucking in my hand, all day long like to suck on things that aren't good for milk for the consumer. So we, we separate the cow from the mom, and she gets her own little calf hutch, um, she's water, she's got some hay to snack on if she wants it, and some grains. 
Uh, just to protect the cow from getting an infection in her udder, uh, they're not built the same way as dairy cow, uh, beef cow. Remember we talked about how a beef cow will only have about a gallon of milk in her udder. Dairy cows with so much milk have more time to make bacteria. Should so, she be drinking more milk? The question was, should she be drinking more milk? So we give her about a gallon of feeding. And the answer is no, um, because Naturally, her stomach is only so big. Is she allowed to go outside? The question was, is she allowed to go outside? And yes, she can go outside um, supervised. We don't want her running around. She's so small that she'll run underneath the fence. And since she's not with her mom, if she's a, like on a big beef cow or a big cattle pasture, um, she would stay together. But um, since she doesn't really know that, it would be dangerous for her to be out unsupervised. So we let her run around out here in the aisle and we take her outside sometimes, but we don't um, typically do that with her. Go on. <laughs> oh, that's the best. <laughs> oh, no, Elsie. Come on. Oh, she Come wants on. to. Yeah, I know she wants to go too, but she sometimes tries to hurt her. This video was produced as an educational component for the Erickson Public Library in Boone County. If you have, need any veterinary services, please visit our website at www.swissfarmvet.com or give us a call at 515-275-2222. Thanks.